6,860 pounds, a Keystone Ubach two slide rear living room coming in on trade here at Haylet RV of uh, Coldwater, Michigan. Uh, that's obviously a tongue in cheek reference to the missing decals on the nose. Overall, she looks pretty good. Heated enclosed belly, the kind of early predecessor to a camp kitchen over there, good pass through storage, power awning, opposing living slides. Uh, the only thing I can really say he has a knock against it is a couple of the decals have seen some sunshine, but overall, it looks like the RV has been kept clean and maintained. So I think the, the structural integrity of it's probably the most important thing, and in that respect, it looks pretty good. Now, I've long been a fan of this floor plan, and, uh, you know, big floor plans like this, they're very often used for destination use, but if you notice, the way that that refrigerator is positioned right there, you can get to the fridge, you can get to the dining, we can get to the kitchen storage and the kitchen prep space. The only thing you really lose out on in transit is the, uh, you know, living room seating. And the thing is, I think that if you're stopping for a utility stop in transit, you're not trying to sit down on the couch. You might be trying to grab a bite to eat, you might be using the bathroom, or you might be sleeping for a little bit, but you don't need to get to the sofa. So I think this one definitely qualifies as, you know, an excellent level of travel accessibility. And then it just opens up and gives us a nice expansive dual slide living area. And this was made during that two-tone generation of uh, outback woodwork. There's kind of a mixture between the uh, kitchen and living room areas, what has which color and where, and I don't know. I've always kind of been a fan of it. I know it's been a hot, cold thing. Some people hate it. Some people love it. I, I tend to like it. we got a big super slide over here. You can see that table and chairs. That is an airbed style hide bed and those just never worked out nicely in the RV industry. I don't really think anyone uses them today, but at the time this was made, a lot of brands were using them. They were lightweight and they had a storage drawer below them and on paper it made a lot of sense. The problem is the quality of the air bladder for the air bed that went with it was just not there. Uh, frankly, you could go to Walmart for $17 and probably get a better air bed, you know, from like Amazon Prime delivered straight to your house. That's pretty much still true. So if that's something you're looking for is that guest hide bed, I would basically plan on budgeting $20 to make sure that there's a functional air mattress for that. And ladies and gentlemen, if the only thing stopping you from calling us today is that you need a uh, guarantee of a working air mattress for that hide bed that very few people use, call us. That's, we could work that out. It's just not that big of a deal. I see where all the owner's manuals and remotes and everything are still present. You can see how it's got that power up, down, hideaway TV over here. Uh, I like the outlets on either side of that, so it's very entertainment expansion friendly. And windows, windows, windows on the driver's side, on the camp side, on the rear side, on any and every side of this RV. We've got us lots of windows, and they all open for lots of airflow, lots of lights, lots of sights. Um, the two chairs there, I like how you have a very social seating arrangement, like I'm standing at that sofa that we saw, and, uh, you know, the chairs face each other, but those chairs right there can obviously turn to face the TV, which is nice. Now, the kitchen is kind of interestingly shaped and arranged. It works nicely, it actually is very functional, but it looks unconventional, because the refrigerator that we saw is on our left-hand side, whereas all the storage is on the right-hand side, uh, as we're looking at it currently. Um, big pots and pan drawers down below, though there's still that one easy reach drawer right below the sink there for your forks, spoons, and knives. And you might have noticed that is not the original microwave. Obviously, the original, original microwave must have, you know, gone the way of the ghost. So, someone just found a very inexpensive, probably, you know, Walmart or Sam's Club uh, microwave that they tossed up in there. The only thing that you need to do is when you travel you will want to uh, take that microwave out of there because it's not bracketed in place. So you just want to kind of secure it somewhere. Pantry space right here. Uh, not to mention there's like a coat closet pantry space by the door, but I want to kind of give you a full look of the living room from the other direction here. Um, I left one of the sets of chairs kind of strapped up in transit mode, then I set the other set down just to kind of give you the uh, full view and understanding of it there. Um, I think we're good in the living area. Central air, central heat, all the normal accoutrement, if you will. Uh, I don't believe I'm missing anything here, actually. Oh, you know what? That's actually not just a straight white. If you get right in here on it, 
It's got a little bit of a green to it. That's a nice touch. I like that. Those are seamless molded doors, by the way, so there's no, like, corners where they can kind of break and fail. And this is that extra, you know, coat closet or pantry I mentioned right by the entry door. So uh, you have great storage in this kitchen. It's just kind of shaped a little funny, sort of like me <laughs> after a Thanksgiving dinner. So there's the little privacy pull across curtain wall over there for the master bedroom. And then you can see that this is a handy dual entry bed and bath. Now, if you're wanting only a one entry door, the thing that a lot, I've noticed a lot of people, they say, well, I don't want a sliding door. Okay, so, like, secure the door. It's very easy to basically deactivate that door and just turn it into a wall. But if something has a wall and you want it to be a door, that's a lot trickier. Because then you got to call Mr. Gallagher and you got to whip out the Sludgematic 9000 series. Uh, that, uh, that came after the 37 series, if you're paying attention. Now, <coughs> um, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what we're looking at with these nylon cords here. I think uh, we might actually be looking at someone's <coughs> uh, private time restraints. <laughs> but uh, moving on from there, <laughs> up to the bedroom, you see we've got a full-length closet on the right side, but a half-length uh, cabinet on the left with an open side stand. This is on purpose so that some people, uh, you know, are kind of claustrophobic. Some people are not. Some people need CPAP machines. Some don't. This really lets you split the difference. There is storage below that bed. It lifts up easily for storage. And uh, I've got that mattress uh, cover pulled back. So you can see a brand new in the plastic mattress swapped in from the RV that they purchased, which I'm operating from memory here, which is a little bit scary because I've got a little bit of that Halfheimer's disease where I only remember stuff about half the time. But I believe they purchased a Jayco. Not that it matters. Under that front bed, we've got ourselves a nice, large pass-through compartment. You can see the all-aluminum skeleton nature of this outback presenting itself right there. Um, the underbelly, as I mentioned previously, it is enclosed and heated. This is not uh, intended to be what people often refer to as a Four Seasons camper. Rather, this is what I refer to as an extended season camper. If uh, What that means, because again, there's really no definition, but what it means to me is if it's going to dip below freezing tonight, <laughs> which at the time of this filming, it will. Notice how there's no leaves on those trees. And then it's gonna come back above freezing tomorrow. This RV will suit you just fine. It'll, it'll handle that kind of weather okay. If you wanna do more extreme weather than that, you should probably start investing in things like skirting and supplemental uh, underbelly heating, regardless, really, of almost any kind of RV you're looking at. Skin is clean. Like I said earlier, it smells clean inside. And other than the decals on the nose, like all your sidewall decals and stuff look pretty good. If I get right down here, down the side, you can see there's still a lot of sheen and gleam left on those sidewalls. Um, the uh, fact that these hinges are sealed is also a nice uh, hot, cold weather shift thing. Because uh, if uh, you know ice gets on a normal piano hinge for a baggage door and then freezes, it will spring the hinge. And it'll still work, but it'll like make that horrible screeching sound. Well, you just won't have as much of that here. Now, we're a little close to the trailers next to us, so I'm going to do my best David Blaine teleport maneuver and meet you on the other side. As we saw indoors, we've got those opposing slides loaded with windows. I mean, this thing just has awesome visibility all over the place. Uh, and of course, you've got privacy shades for those windows. And I'm, <laughs> I'm tripping on a, on a rock in the yard here. Pardon me, I just about went ace over tea kettle and landed on my face, which would have made for an excellent blooper and outtake, but it also would make for a pretty expensive, uh, you know, dental bill when I bust my face and teeth. Anyway, back to the point. Plenty of windows, plenty of sights, plenty of light, plenty of airflow. And then as we wrap our way around the corner here, two more main points I want to take a look at. First is the predecessor to what's become the very popular outdoor camp kitchen, and that is the little mini camp kitchenette. Just a little kind of baby sink dog dish thing and a little outdoor cooktop, but it's enough. It gets the job done and it folds away, gets out of the way. Aluminum wheels, looks like original tires that look fine, but down there, you've also got a trail air uh, suspension system, which is a very underrated feature. People do not pay enough attention to enhanced suspension systems, specifically in the travel trailer market. And people don't really even think about it in the fifth wheel market because it's pretty much standard at that point. But uh, in travel trailers, anytime you see something other than just a conventional leaf spring, 
be very happy for it. It's been my experience that RVs that have enhanced suspension systems have a little bit better service records because they're not getting jostled and jiggled so hard. Not to mention the fact that they're just going to ride smoother on the way. So it's better for the trailer, better for your vehicle, better for your experience overall. So give us a call here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan. You can't see a lot of them from here, but we've got, at the time of this filming, 706 RVs in stock. That is no small amount of inventory. This is just a quick look at part of our used RV section over here right now. There's plenty more that you can't see here, but you can see it all at halodrv.com. So whether you call, click, email, send smoke signals, or God forbid, drive in and let us shake your hand in person, we look forward to meeting you. And take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.